What is up everybody, Gifford here, and welcome back to a late night stock market video. Today we're gonna to talk about the three stocks that I'm gonna be buying in September. Getting straight into it, the stock number one is On Semiconductor, ticker symbol On Semi is a US semiconductor company, which is in my field of work, electronics. And On Semi has an attractive valuation of a PE 21. And we know that the current PE ratio of the S&P 500 is 23.4. So this means that On Semi is a little bit lower value than other companies in the S&P. So the next slides we'll be going into is ticker terminal, which is looking Looking at a favorite metrical mine which is an EV to revenue ratio then we'll go into stock unlock tool and then we'll have a look at the DCF valuations as well so looking into ticker terminal we can see here that the year to date that the price is up 58.9 percent and if we hit the valuations tab and look at one of my favorite valuation metrics which is total enterprise value to the revenue so we can see here that the current ratio is 4.99% and we can see looking back in the last three years that you could have actually got this with a ratio of 1.29% here at the COVID drop. So this does tell us that right now on Femi is a little bit expensive from what we've been buying in the past and this is something that I want to know because if I'm buying the stock now, am I buying it at an expensive time in its history or is it a cheap time? So a cheap time would have been to buy it here around about the threes or the fours. So just knowing this bit of information just means that if you're buying the stock, just remember Remember to have a little bit of sideline money because it could drop back down again. So we can see here that OnSemi had a high for this at 5.75, which means that it is actually, this valuation here is actually pretty high. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have some sideline money just in case this goes down. So have a look at its revenue and EPS. One of the things I'm investing on Semi is that they continue to grow their revenue year on year. So we can see here, the revenue is just over $5 billion. At 2020, obviously there was the pandemic. It just came up a little bit lower. And at 2021, they started to, accelerate that and in 2022 they're now over eight billion dollars and we can see that the earnings have gone up nicely also found on yahoo finance we can see here that currently in september that there is five strong buys nine buys and six holds and this is done by analyst recommendations so here is a new site that i'm currently using which is called stock unlock it gives you a free 14 day trial anyway we can see here that the stock is currently up if i click this it will tell me how much it is up by year to date so we go here and it's just 60 percent for the year so we'll just go over some basic metrics of stock unlock which i like to see it's got an insight score here of four out of five which is really really good company it means that it's quite stable we can see the ford pe is 17.49 so that's going to be a lot better than the 21.5 that we currently have and it's got a free cash flow yield at 2.76 so that's very good as well and the inside score gives you a bit of a breakdown so it's insight score is good it's growth is good analysts good well it's all good as well and management is very good at 4.5 percent and again the financial shows us that it is increasing year on year the revenue and also the earnings will go with that as well and if we click quarter on quarter the quarter has been pretty flat at two and 2.09 so that's pretty flat but that's quarter on quarter as long as long term you do see this continual growth and here we have the summary of the buy orders that we just talked about and some price targets that they've put in so the high is 141 123 and the low is 101 dollars and if we compare it to where it is now so they do expect it to go up a little bit but that's just to be taken with a grain of salt your own research will tell you where about the stock will go to one of the things i've moved into stock unlock is because you can actually click here and it says view dcf so DCF is just a calculation using other metrics to see how much the company will cost and also its projected share price. Now, it does vary of how you change these numbers. You can just sit here and autofill and if you change any of these numbers here, it does change this trajectory um, quite drastically. So you've actually got to understand what each of these inputs are because they will affect it. Anyway, just using the autofill on this DCF, we can see that the fair value is $113. So they think it's 16%. So future stock value is going to increase by 87% percent and its CAGR is going to be 13 percent every year. So just to show you how drastically it can change this we'll just change the metric growth so let's pretend like the company is not going to grow very fast we'll just change it to five percent and you can then see that hey the DCF has actually changed quite a bit its fair value is now minus 34 percent its future one is still going to be good because it's actually going to go above that current price so that's only six percent and its CAGR is now only 1.19 percent for the growth so just going to Yahoo Finance we just go to statistics and we can have a look at some important metrics you can see here the profit margin is at 23 percent which is very very good its return on asset is 14.57 percent and a return on equity is 31 percent and back to stock unlock i like to click the insider tab and we can see here who is buying or selling and we can see that there has been a lot of sales this one here where it was a million dollars and they've dropped their holdings by five percent now i'm not really worried about this because the shares that they own is quite a lot so it's only five percent drop if you saw 
offloading about minus 50% of their shares. Now that would be really concerning, but it kind of gives you an idea of what they think the price of the stock should be worth. So about 100 or over 100 is something to sell. Now currently the price is at 97. So this person here sold at about $90. So that's telling me that they think this is probably overvalued right now, but just gives you a good indication of what someone is willing to sell it or to buy it in this case here this person um, got a grant so they didn't actually pay for their shares. So who knows what will happen to OnSemi but I'm definitely a buyer when it hits these lows here and we might even get lucky and get down to here but the key thing is to make sure that I have money to buy these dips. Stock number two is Dexcom, ticker symbol DXCM and they are a medical device supplier from the USA. And we can see the valuation PE for Dexcom is 109 and because this is so far above the S&P we now regard this as a gross stock so we're paying a lot of money for future value because we think it's going to grow a lot faster so in this case the valuation of p20 doesn't really matter and again we're going to have a look at the ticket terminal the ev to revenue ratios go back into stock unlock and have a look at its dcf and also understand that this stock is all about growth so if there is no growth literally in the stock the stock price could decline by up to minus 50 percent that you've seen other stocks because everyone is buying the price now for it to really move up. So back to your ticker terminal, we can see that its ratio right now is 10.3% and we can see that it's had a high at 21% and a low at 8.59. So this is telling me that right now is actually a good time to buy Dexcom because it has a low ratio value, which means that it's pretty much half of it when it's larger. So it makes it very attractive. We're down here at the lower end. So having a look at Dexcom, we'll have a year to date and we can see that it is actually minus 8% for the year to date. And a few important metrics, we can see that it's 3.73 out of 5% for the score and it's insight score here, good, some very good, and although the management is very average. And again, one of the things I'm buying this is because its revenue is just starting to go up and up and up. We can see here it's 1.5 in 2019 and in 2022, it's now doubled to $3 billion. It is a little bit concerning that the earnings, which is blue, hasn't really kept up with it. We can see here in 2021, it has dipped down and then again, it is starting to climb a little bit up. In 2022, we don't have 2023 here because we've got to wait for those financials to come through. But in 2022, it is $341 million and in 2020, they actually made more money. So let's just hope they're using that money to build back into their company. And having a look at the price targets here, we can see that Dexcom, the analysts do like it. It's got a 4.4 three very strong buy recommendation but they think that it is high it could go up to 183 dollars which is 76 percent from this point on it's average 152 and a low of 131 so right now with a price at 104 dexcom really shows a lot of growth ahead so going over to the dcf again we just auto fill it to what it thinks it is which is the main metric is the free cash flow and here we can see that the current stock price is 104 dollars it's got fair value here of 289 dollars its future stock price is pretty damn massive at $465 and its CAGR is at 34%. So it should be no surprise that the stock is really priced in as growth. So it's going to continue to grow at what, 49, 50%. That's pretty crazy every year. And then if you're interested in these values and how you get them, you can just hit um, show calculation and it will show you here how it finds these. But what's important, instead of taking these numbers here, you've got to figure out if this company and also do your research, if they can hit these numbers and get these valuations. Because at the end of the day, these numbers will only matter if they hit the revenue and the company continues to make a profit that then gives back to the shareholders, which is all up to you to do your due diligence. So have a look at the revenue guidance. Companies do say what they're going to do ahead of time. And this is all that check them. When the CEO says, hey, I'm going to do this much amount of revenue and profit, then you really check at the end of the year, was he actually telling the truth? Were their projections correct? Because if they tell you, hey, the company's going to five times in the future, well, if he's lying, it's not going to five times it, and you're not really going to be investing. But if you feel confident that he is going to five times, obviously you're going to five times your share price eventually when that happens, when you invest today. So it's very important to have a look. So in this case, uh, for Dexcom, what they did is they previously, they said they're going to do 3.4 to 3 3.515 billion dollars and you can see here that they've updated it a little bit now the non-gap profit margin still about the same this is about the same and this is about the same so they just increased it more so this is pretty good because basically they're saying is whatever they guided for they're gonna easily well not easily but they're gonna be hitting that just fine and taking another slide from their investor relations page i can't remember which one it is but this one here is the tam which is a total addressable market you can see that we are growing fast and taking share internationally and over here are the other 
competitors and we can see that Dexcom is way ahead of them in these quarters. And this is good because they're telling you that internationally they've got projections here of all the way up to 2025 that they're only at the moment 20% internationally have taken the share but they're going to go up to 30% which means more revenue and more money making for them. So we can see the last three years that Dexcom did go down as low as into the 70s so I am pretty happy buying at 100 over here because the trend line we can see that it can go down to $80 and then the lowest point is $70 so again buy some but there could also be dips in the future if there's any economic turmoil and so I'm pretty keen to buy more of this company right now I'm pretty sure I have over 500 uh, US dollars in this company and I am still trying to acquire more of this company in the future so going into the last stock I'm buying which is Tesla no surprises here and we're going to value Tesla as a car manufacturer they've got other divisions but let's just talk about their car manufacturing and again, Tesla is a gross stock. It's got a crazy high PE. I think it's still under 100 PE, but still that's pretty high. And the thing about Tesla is you either believe in them or you don't. So for this video, we're just gonna talk about their car business, not the energy, not the robots, and not the AI. So this graph I pulled from the previous link, and this just really shows you that Tesla can and will ramp up their production very quickly, unlike other automakers. So we can see the numbers here really starting to track pace. And as of Q2 2023, it's just under 500,000 cars per quarter. So this slide here is being taken from an investor relations page and really what it's trying to show is that the total ICE vehicles that we have at the moment, Tesla wants to replace those with the EV transition. So if you're investing in Tesla, really you got to ask yourself, can they sell this many cars? So they have the big job of actually producing the cars, but will people actually buy them and can they get any decent profit margin when they produce the cars so that there's actually earnings from those products? So have a look at these numbers. That's a pretty big total addressable market. I then use this website here and it tells me that so far Tesla has only actually made 630,000 vehicles out of the 40 million that they think is addressable in the market so that's only 0.16% that they've produced so for the smaller cars of 380 million of demand they've only actually made 3.3 million which is 0.87% so what this tells me is that they've calculated the total amount of cars that they want to be replaced that they've only actually replaced a small segment of this which means if this is real or even half this number and they can and get the whole market share they're going to make a lot of money from this so currently i only have less than 20 shares of tesla across all my portfolio the biggest thing i want to do though is buy as many shares as i can before mexico gets going because i think this is going to be a critical factory for them where they make that cheap car eventually when that comes off the production lines so reading here the compact car for tesla will be critical to push the stock's market cap into the trillion dollar mark more revenue will only come if they can do more car sales so they can be sold to the general public at a lower affordable price also a big money making scheme will be their self-driving software which will increase revenue fsd and also a robo taxi if that ever comes out so previously i have sold some tesla stocks but i really want to start gathering these ones and buying them at lows if the stock goes crazy and like doubles in price in the like two weeks i will actually sell a little bit um, to buy back because naturally tesla goes up and down anyway because it's a volatile stock but i'd like to have a core holding where i do not sell the stock and just hold for the long term well that is enough for now and those are the stocks that i'm going to be buying this month across my portfolios let me know in the comments what you think of the stocks and also what stocks are you going to be buying in september right now i'm just kind of stockpiling my cash we've got the fed meeting in september 20th i think and then that should really cause the market to kind of move one way or the other so thank you for watching and i also recommend watching my other videos to see what i'm invested in with my portfolios if you want to hear more from me feel free to join me over in instagram where i post every other day on useful stock market events the trading platform i use is interactive brokers hatch invest stake and shares these for individual companies and i use invest now for index funds if you want to start investing, you can use any of my referral codes down below to start your own investing journey if you are from New Zealand. Hit like and subscribe to join the journey from someone who invests from New Zealand. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.